Welcome on board with the Vice President of the United States. Crossing time zones and continents, the Vice President embarked on a six-day diplomatic trip to Asia, stopping in Japan, China, and the Republic of Korea to reaffirm our enduring presence as a Pacific power and promote our shared economic, trade, and security interests. Monday, the Vice President arrived in Japan and was greeted by the U.S. Ambassador to Japan, Caroline Kennedy. Japan is our closest ally now. It's overwhelming in the security interests and the economic interests of the United States and Japan to do well. We are, as they say in my old neighborhood, joined at the hip. I've been looking forward to this trip. We have a lot to discuss. The next morning, the Vice President stopped by the Ambassador's residence to meet with the Deputy Prime Minister and members of the National Legislature of Japan. Before departing for Embassy Tokyo to greet Embassy staff and their families, the Vice President left flowers in the residence garden at a memorial fountain honoring Senator Daniel Inouye. Later, he traveled to the headquarters of the internet company DNA, not only to take in the breathtaking views of Tokyo, but to meet with workers and then with business leaders during a roundtable discussion to discuss the role of women in the Japanese economy and the challenges they face in the workplace. That evening, he joined Prime Minister Shinzo Abe for a bilateral meeting, followed by joint statements to the press. Then it was on to China, where a red carpet was rolled out upon arrival. The first stop was the consular section of the U.S. Embassy, where he highlighted embassy efforts to streamline visa application procedures and reduce wait times. He then welcomed the approximately 200 Chinese citizens who were on hand to receive U.S. visas. And one of the things you'll find when you come to America, we are all immigrants in my country. So I hope some of you students, when you come to visit, you decide you want to stay. Later, the Vice President was officially welcomed to China at a ceremony in the Great Hall of the People. He then embarked on a series of diplomatic meetings with Chinese leaders. On Thursday morning, the Vice President spoke on the state of U.S.-China relations before heading down the road past Tiananmen Square and arriving west of the Forbidden City for a bilateral meeting with the Chinese Premier. Then it was on to the Zhao Yutai State Guest House, where President Nixon stayed in 1972 during his historic trip to normalize relations with China. Here, the Vice President had lunch with Vice President Li and was treated to a cultural performance by the Children and Young Women Chorus of the China National Symphony Orchestra. If I only did one thing in coming to China, if I only got to hear you sing, it would have been worth the trip. Before departing for Seoul, the Vice President stopped by a local tea house where he reflected upon his time in China. I had great meetings with a good friend, President Xi. We spent about four and a half hours together discussing issues of mutual interest. This is a relationship based on candor. The hospitality has been shown to us by not only the elected officials, but by the Chinese people has been very important. The Vice President's first stop in Seoul was the Blue House, the executive office and official residence of President Park. The two held a bilateral meeting before the Vice President delivered remarks on U.S.-Korea relations to students and faculty at Yonsei University. Later, the Vice President traveled across town for a bilateral meeting with the Prime Minister. On his last day in Asia, the Vice President visited the Korean War Memorial to lay a wreath in honor of fallen soldiers. He then greeted and thanked troops, embassy staff, and their families at Yongsan Army Garrison before taking the 25-minute helicopter ride over Seoul and north, past villages and farms, to the Camp Boniface landing zone, en route to Observation Point Wallet, deep inside the demilitarized zone, also known as the DMZ. Sir, welcome to the edge of freedom. Good to Free be world back. ends about five meters in front of us. Here, the Vice President was briefed by U.S. and Republic of Korea soldiers on the background of the observation post, as well as the current military situation. After thanking the soldiers for their service, he headed to the observation deck at the Freedom House, a large conference center that sits directly on the military demarcation line and overlooks a similar conference center to the north. The Vice President's visit did not go without notice. This is not my first trip to the DMZ. It is a stark illustration of the difference between North Korea and South, the difference between our system, democracy and freedom, and a communist system that's an archaic, brutal system to the north. Then it was back aboard the helicopters en route to Osan Air Base, where he climbed the stairs to Air Force Two to embark on the 16-hour journey home as the sun set over Seoul. She could we take a selfie? Sure we can do a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You gotta send me a copy of it, okay?